Sansbury. <laughs> the guy's met in person. Yeah. Oh, has have I you met Sansbury? I, I didn't know. I've ever met him. Okay. You've never you didn't been meet to him a at the station event? At the game last like yes, at the home you did opener. Meet him. He was on air with us at the same time at the home opener. Oh no, Cody left. Yeah, he left. Cody was Sent out. At, yeah, he was out Hope. giving away tickets. <laughs> Don't call me the hoe. I didn't he wasn't send there. you out. I didn't cast you out like the you demon you are. You exiled me. <laughs> yeah, no, so I've never met him. I've ne- There's people in this building that have been on air for years, and I still have never met formally. Like who? I don't know. I haven't met him. Bill Squire. <laughs> oh. I don't know. We I haven't never met, met him. never met formally. Well, no, but you, <laughs> you know who you haven't met. But, like, I, there's people on air that I don't know that I haven't met them, and then they're like, oh, I've been doing this for a year. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. Like, Bloom Daddy, I didn't know that I met him. You don't know what you don't know until you know it. And then I was like, oh, that's Bloom Daddy. I've, I've met him. <laughs> like, I crossed well, all the time. Well, b- before, I mean, you can't get too casual with him. Before you meet him, he's Bloom Father. Okay. Anyway, Aerosmith. Um, I love that song, Draw the Line. That I don't know why. There's people who have their favorite Aerosmith songs. I just love Draw the Line. I love that Joe Perry riff. That was, if you go all the way back with Aerosmith, that was like their fourth or fifth album. But that was when everybody thought Aerosmith was done because rather than being musicians who took a lot of drugs, they became drug addicts who were just making records. And so that was, by the time the late 70s came around, the band was breaking up, Joe Perry's out. I mean, you know, everybody's like, Aerosmith is done. Obviously, that didn't happen. Uh, they kicked all of it. They were gone for a while. The big comeback album was uh, late 80s. They started making kind of poppier rock. It was a lot glossier, and that kind of ushered in the full return of Aerosmith. And uh, But they announced uh, they're coming to Cleveland. They have decided to call it quits. Uh, they announced their farewell tour. It's called the Peace Out Tour. And the tickets will go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. They're going to play the Romo Fijo on September 21st with the Black Crows. Uh, they did so, they've done it all. I mean, they, they've done the the Vegas residency. They have like a ride or something at Universe. I don't know. They got all this crap. I can't help but think, even though it's old news, but it made its way back into the news cycle, uh, the Steven Tyler, the girl suing Steven Tyler for banging her back in the day when she was 16. I mean, it's in his book, but the climate being what it is now, I wonder if these guys collectively were like, let's just get this, let's just do it one more time. Let's cash out. And that's it. Steven Tyler is 75 years old. I don't know why I didn't realize he was that old. And he's memed all the time as someone's old grandma. Their aunt. Your cool aunt. <laughs> Your cool aunt. Mm-hmm. Because he's, yes, he he's aged very strangely. If you have the distinct misfortune of seeing like a... Uh, beach pic of him on in the Daily Mail or something <laughs> when he's walking around. He's got his sideshow Bob thing up there and walking around in a loincloth. But uh, if you're an Aerosmith fan, and I am, I like Aerosmith, uh, Black Crows are great too. But when I was talking to Span- Stansbury earlier, I was like, it occurred to me that I've never seen Aerosmith live. That's something you need to do. I guess it is because I don't want to not, you know, yeah. I'm Johnny Come Lately for as long as I've been in showbiz and as long as many bands as I've seen over the course of my career, I really am super, super late to seeing some of them live. Like we're going to see Kiss in Detroit this fall. I've been to shows where I left before Kiss came on. So it was like I just wanted to see who was opening up. And I like Kiss, but it's embarrassing that I've never sat through an entire kiss headlining set and i kind of feel the same about aerosmith so anyway aerosmith was always kind of the analog to the rolling stones back in the day they were like rolling stones are the greatest british rock band aerosmith are the greatest american rock band and there were people that would argue incessantly about that the beatles well no that's a whole other thing they were british and but i mean people who would argue that Aerosmith was the analog to the Rolling Stones. They kind of got going around the same time. I mean, they kind of came up and, you know, in, in they're all about the same age. But you have to hand it to anybody who has hung on as long as they have. So if you're an Aerosmith fan, and there, you'll find plenty of people who that's their favorite band is Aerosmith.
Uh, they're coming through on the farewell tour in September at the Romo Fijo. Uh, we will probably have tickets for you at some point on this program. But um, it'll be a good live band to see. I'm talking about movies, we went to we took the low one to Super Mario Brothers. Did you love it? She loved it. It's it, it, so cute. It's kind of tough getting her into movies because she's not, you know, it's not really her uh, cup of tea. But we were like, oh, let's go. You know, it'll be fun. Blah, blah, blah. Raining most of the weekend. She loved it. Now, I sound like a douche when I say this, but I didn't play Mario Brothers growing up. Mm-hmm. Gwen did. She got douche. the whole thing. So there's a whole bunch of that movie that I don't quite get. Yeah. But... I there were a couple of I laughed out loud a couple of times. It's it's so silly. And yeah, it's I mean, so it, good. It's it's a silly movie. There's there's enough jokes for everybody to get, and then also they just keep it moving. Like they didn't dwell too long in anything. It was like an hour like, forty. It was right, yeah, which yeah. Is, yeah. Nice. Which great. is nice. Great because they can sometimes, especially with kids movies, make them way too long. Pixar has gotten, uh, they were making too many movies that were too long, but I think they've they've reeled it back in. Well, for as much as people were complaining about Chris Pratt being Mario when they first announced it. I thought he did great. I thought he did, too, because they kind of made him more like a couple of guys from Brooklyn yeah. rather than like, hey, it's a me. You yeah. know, but they also. And they still reference it and make a fun yeah. joke about it. Well, it's uh, it's made a billion dollars now. So Super oh. Mario Brothers is uh, the first film in 2023 to cross the billion dollar mark. Did Chris Pratt After 26 days by the way. Oh my god, did he get big from Parks and Rec? No, he got big from uh Guardians of the Galaxy. Guardians. No, no, yeah. but I'm saying he was like discovered on Parks and Rec and then he got Yeah. yeah. Jurassic Park cuz I remember watching Parks and Rec and he was like a chubby funny guy. Yeah. He got shredded for uh Guardians of the Galaxy. So he, he did a few movies um before like in his weight was fluctuating because he was in Moneyball, right? And he lost some weight to get to play a role in that because he plays a baseball player, and then he put more weight back on, and that's when they're like, "Okay, we want you to be Star Lord, but you got to lose this weight." And he lost like sixty pounds and put all that muscle on. We actually just watched that yesterday because the new one comes out this week, and I forgot how goddamn jacked he is in that so first high. one. So well, I remember him, and he was one of the SEAL team guys in Zero Dark Thirty. Did you yeah. ever see that? He w- And he was still kind of, he was halfway between chubby and ripped. Mm-hmm. But once they were like, you're going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy, he was always posting like shirtless photos, yeah. which I would too. Yeah. If I was a, you know, look like him and then got shredded. Um, yeah, I love him. But yeah, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is out Friday. We're doing a screening of it. Are you going? Is yeah. it Wednesday night? Wednesday night, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's getting mixed reviews, whatever, like any of those movies I, do. I saw th- most of the reviews were that it's real good and real fun and real emotional. So I'm excited. He is the voice in the Garfield reboot. I don't know why they keep rebooting <laughs> Garfield. It was like Bill Murray mm-hmm. did Garfield years ago, and the story about how he got in it is hilarious to me. Because he thought it was the Coen Brothers. He thought movie. it was the Coen Brothers <laughs> rather than a guy named, it was C O E N. He thought the Coen Brothers were doing Garfield? Yes. <laughs> And so he signed on because Bill Murray famously is a guy with no representation. So you have to call his phone and get him on the phone. And Keep peas uh, in the pod, me and that Bill Murray. <laughs> you got to call Bill Squire and get him on the phone yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. No representation for either of them. <laughs> no, there was a guy named Joel Cohen. There's there's Joel and Ethan Cohen, the Cohen brothers, who did Fargo and, and all these great movies, right? Well, there's another guy named Joel Cohen who did Cheaper by the Dozen. And Classic. Toy Story. Even and, right, not directed, but wrote some of these. And so somebody hits up Bill Murray and says, hey, Joel Cohen is doing Garfield. And he goes, of course. Amazing. Now, how they got him to do the second one, I don't know, unless they signed him up for two. Because he did do the second one. But um, in a classic case of mistaken identity. And the movie did fine. Garfield made a lot of money. It might have been the last gasp of one Brecken Meyer. <laughs> now that I think about it, I mean Franklin and Bash, notwithstanding, but uh, I don't know what that guy does now. But yeah, we took her to Super Mario Brothers, and um, it was fun. Yeah, it's a fun one. It was good. 
I didn't think it was going to stink. I was just worried that, like, I wasn't going to care or follow it or whatever. Well, you're on record as never watching any children's movies. You're like, I've never seen Aladdin. What's well, Lion King? But, well, but, but it's also, it's a generational thing. I was in college when those were out. So, yeah. you know, I'm not going to go see Aladdin when I'm 20 years old. Well. That's not for me. You screwed up, man. Could have taken hmm. a date. Right, but I show up with an eight-year-old, I would have been arrested immediately, Mary. I didn't say you would have taken an the underage math. child. Oh, my God, by the way, I have to tell you this, now that you say that. Um, so Brian was being very sweet, and he was like, because uh, last year I was upset he didn't get me anything for Mother's Day, right? So this year he was like, I want to do something for you and Blake. Oh God, the Mother's Day thing. <laughs> oh, wait, listen. He was like, I want to do something for you and Blake so you guys can spend some time together. I said, that's great. What are you, what are you thinking? He goes, well, I know you guys both like being pampered, so what if we got, like, you went and got your nails done? And I was like, oh, well, my nail place isn't... Uh, <laughs> And open on Sundays, and he goes, "Well, what if you two went and got like a couple's massage?" And I, he's like, "Not like a couple romantic thing." I said, "Brian, what establishment do you think is massaging seven year olds?" And, and they're like, all romantic <laughs> massages. He was like, "What do you mean? If I like signed for her to be able to go there?" I said, "No adult human is going to willingly massage a seven year old body." And you he, have to be eighteen <laughs> years old, probably, if yeah. not officially, then unofficially. He had no idea. He was, like, embarrassed that he, he, like, caught off guard. He was like, I don't know. I'm just trying to be nice. And I was like, I appreciate the sentiment, but please do not send me into a massage parlor with your daughter. Hi, this is my, um, this is my seven-year-old bonus child. It's like, they will arrest me immediately if you try to send me in with a child to have an adult person massage them. And we're coming in for a couple's massage. Is this your daughter? No, it's my boyfriend's daughter. That's exactly how I described it too. I was like, legally, she's not mine. I can't. Technically, probably shouldn't even have her. You know. <laughs> well, and the reason we're here is last year I cried on Mother's Day, and so they wanted something to do special, and this is how they thought we could bond. That is gross. I was laughing so hard yesterday. I, I forgot f- about the Mother's for- Day thing. Yes, I forgot what? you got flipped out over Mother's I didn't Day last year. Out. My you feelings were, were hurt. Oh, uh, you were perturbed. I cried over mother my not being recognized on Mother's Day because my feelings were hurt. Because, if I recall correctly, and I think I do, your thought was, "I'm doing all of the motherly things. Right? Why am I not being feted for that? Correct. Right. I'm taking on a motherly role. Uh huh. Why am I not being recognized for such? Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever. Right." But he was he was laughing at that because I asked him, I said, have you ever had to get anyone anything for Mother's Day other than your own mom? And he was like, no, because him and his ex-wife uh, divorced right after the kid was born. So he didn't have to do anything for her for Mother's Day. And Wait, right after she was born? Her? I think they actually might have separated while she was pregnant. Wow, that's a baller move. Dude, they, from the way he describes a timeline. I, I don't, don't even want different. you in the room when I squeeze this cabbage <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. From the what? day that they met, dated, moved in, pregnant, married, divorced, less than two years. God, you gotta love Berea. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. They're from Chesterland. They're from God, you gotta, oh, even worse. <laughs> you gotta love Chesterlin. Yeah. You're on the sticks. You're like, well, this is as good as it's gonna get. Right. So I asked him, I was like, have you ever, and he's like, no, because, you go, Kelly and I were divorced, and then my ex-girlfriend, he said uh, she never wanted kids. They dated anyway. He got her flowers. On oh, there was somebody day. between you and the ex. Yes, there was a. He dated someone in between us, and he said the kind of a similar situation. They weren't living together yet, but she was, you know, heavily involved in Blake's life. And he got her flowers on Mother Day, and she freaked out and was like, "Absolutely not! I've told you I don't want to be a mom. Uh, this is ridiculous. I'm not her mother. I can't believe you would do this." Like she was really, really mad at How him. How did he misread? That? that i don't know he said he was just trying to do something nice and she lost her mind i said how i said how was that not a hey we should probably break up moment you know it's also but it's also not nice if you know this person adamantly doesn't want to be a parent but that was my whole question to him was like if she's gonna act that way why would you even have her in your life knowing your kid's not gonna go anywhere you get what i'm saying yeah but he didn't uh, he probably didn't want to have a kid with her Yes, but if she's that adamant against don't even recognize me as a mother figure. Well, yeah, so what? 
How are you going to live your life with someone like that? You have a kid. They're going to have to be around it. What life? He was dating her. Life. But, Just because uh, okay. he married the first person he banged in Chesterland doesn't mean that you're going to like, well, you know what I mean. People. It's like, whatever. First person uh, he knocked up. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but my, no, not, every saying, person, not every person you date is a potential spouse. Okay, well, then that's where we differ. I would assume if you have huh. a kid, you're probably dating someone more seriously than not. If you're introducing them to your kid to the point we're going to recognize them on Mother's Day, if they're involved enough in your child's life and you're like, hey, this is going to be a serious thing, right? I guess. I mean, the person I dated between my ex-wife and Gwen, she didn't mean she had kids. We dated like four years. But did you introduce her to your kids? No. That's my point. He did. This woman was in his daughter's life. Yeah, but she didn't want to be. Yeah, and I'm saying that was a red flag. They didn't even break up on Mother's Day. They dated after that. I was like, that that should have been like a, hey, he's you very like, clearly don't want to be in this, well, you know? If I could try to read his mind. See, he's smart. What he wanted to do was date her another full year so the next Mother's Day he could do nothing for her and she'd be really happy. Right. See? Well, that's why Not a baby zilch. That's why he was all messed up. He goes, you know, my ex, I got screamed at for recognizing her. And then two years later, you're crying because I didn't recognize you. Right. And now I'm trying to schedule a massage for my underage child. <laughs> He's like, I can't win. You're twisting his mind into a pretzel. He's like, I can't do anything great. I got this blister on my hand. I don't know what the hell's going on. Just let me garden. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Buy me a sign that says bedroom and yep. a live, laugh, love pillow. <laughs> I'll be out weeding if you need me. <laughs> yeah, but I left. So I was like, I had tears What a roller down my coaster. Face. Yeah, don't, you don't want to do that. I said, Brian, you cannot take a seven year old to a massage parlor. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, though, and I don't know the legalities of it, but that clearly is an opportunity for some entrepreneurial type here in this Northeast Ohio. This is so Ohio. bad. You can't. How do you market that? It, so down. it's just it. No, Lil Massagers. Mm -hmm. or, or Is it other children massaging yes. the well, children? Well, I mean, they have to be. Licensed, yes, yeah. they have to be licensed. You cannot, you cannot market a business where adults massage children. <laughs> you, I can't even what say, about I little can't people? Even what say. about dwarves? What about people who are the size of children it's but not legally about adults? Size. <laughs> it's kind of about size. Oh kind of. Oh, All right. <laughs> Never stopped us before. Good touch child massage. That's what I mean. <laughs> Healing hands children's massage. Oh, like, it's got what? blocks on the sign, right? Yeah, the R is backwards. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> or like it's just massage envy, but envy is spelled in like the kid font. Just yeah. envy. Yeah. Envy. Little massage envy. <laughs> oh. There's something there. Something there. Everybody says you're crazy if you yeah, have an but, inventive who, mind. But you, who are you going to hire? Who are you going to hire? Who are, your who are you going to ask for money? Because anybody that wants to invest in that, you're like, what are your motives? We need to see your hard yes. drive. You can't. I but when I all those like, are fine and you're on the level, they go, well, even then, I still don't trust it. I was there's like, I am not going to celebrate the first Mother's Day with this child by getting her human trafficked. I am absolutely <laughs> not taking her anywhere where someone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, let her in the room. We'll rub her. Mm -hmm. We'll rub her down. Mary, I noticed both of you left, but only you came back. You want to tell me what happened? Funny thing. Well, you won't think it's funny. I don't mean funny. You gotta ha, read ha, those ha. waivers. Right. <laughs> Fine, Prince. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Listen. Don't take your kid to get massaged. That's the overarching thing here. Uh, the more you know about that, the, the happier you'll be when it comes to. Right.